This is RTV6 News at 7, working for you. We're going to be informed by the numbers as they are before us, day in and day out. And we're not going to try to um, get around the numbers. Uh, we're not going to make any decisions um, prematurely. Um, this is going to be a safety first approach. The number of coronavirus cases in Indiana continues to rise, but state leaders are working toward guidelines to allow businesses to reopen. Thanks for joining us for RTV6 News at 7. I'm Mark Mullins. And I'm Amanda Starantino. Indiana's stay-at-home order will continue through May 1st, but Governor Holcomb says Indiana's economic recovery team is working on standards for restarting certain industries. That includes cleaning protocols, physical distancing, wearing masks, barriers, and more. Today, the State Department of Health reported an additional 61 coronavirus deaths, bringing the total to 630. There have been 12,000 positive cases of COVID-19 out of the 67,000 people tested for the virus. That's an 18% rate of positivity. And checking in now with Chief Meteorologist Kevin Gregory, tracking the weather from home. Kevin, it was a little chilly out today with that wind, a little brutal. That it blamed the wind. You know, we had the sunshine trying to help out, but it was the wind, as you can see at the Motor Speedway on top of the pagoda, gusting over 30 miles per hour, and in some cases, peak gusts over 40 miles per hour, 42 up in Muncie. Let's talk about the headlines then for the evening hours. Here's what's ahead. The wind will calm down, starts at sunset, and then we'll go under 10 miles per hour as we go past midnight. Frost likely in the morning, some spots eastern Indiana may touch the freezing mark, but however cold we are in the morning, a big temperature jump is on the way tomorrow with a, a range, I think, of 30 degree climb from morning low to afternoon high. Sky is virtually spotless, lots of uh, sunshine. It'll be a beautiful looking sunset. 28 mile per hour gust right now in Lafayette, still gusting over 30 in the metro area. Frost advisory, eastern half of the state, the coldest night in my seven day forecast Tonight, we'll talk about the warmest days ahead, and they're limited, coming up. And RTV6 is sharing resources and stories that will help our community rebound from the coronavirus pandemic. That includes our commitment to hiring Hoosiers and making sure you know how to land your next job. RTV6's Cameron Riddle shows you how a central Indiana group is preparing Hoosier women for the job and interview of the future. The coronavirus has changed just about everything we do, making remote conversations the new normal, whether for school or work. But what about landing that next big job? People are preparing for either their next big role or they may feel like because of whatever's going on with their employer, they may need to shift or pivot. Shayla Penner is the Director of Marketing and Development at Dress for Success Indianapolis, an organization that prepares women for job interviews. She says virtual interviews like the one she and I did tonight are here to stay. That is the norm. Um, we actually think it's going to carry on past this current time. We think employers will stick with virtual interviews versus bringing someone in. Penner says, like an in-person interview, there are things to consider before a virtual interview, including how you dress and what your surroundings look like behind you. Take a look at the room Shayla is in right now. It's clear of distractions and clean, but still, there are improvements Shayla would recommend for herself. The only downfall for me is lighting right now. I don't have a ton of lighting in this office, um, but I actually have a little halo light over my laptop right now to add, um, and I have my blinds open. But I have my door shut because I do have dogs um, and they're actually out so you can't hear them. Penner says other tips like how to set up Zoom calls, building a resume, and how you should dress are all lessons the Dress for Success Indie team will be sharing during their weekly and free virtual workshop Wednesday. Penner says now is the perfect time to prepare for something new. I think folks are just really trying to prepare and if you're at home right now, you have, what else better can you do than prepare for whatever that next big move is? Working for you in Indianapolis, Cameron Riddle, RTV6. And Wednesday's free workshop begins at 1 p.m. To get the link to join the call, you have to first register with Dress for Success Indianapolis. You can learn more at the IndyChannel.com. The shutdown in the world, uh, the demand is is very much a concern about what their finished product is, is how much of a demand there's going to be. 
Indiana farmers are feeling the effects of the state and nationwide shutdowns. They have crops that they can't sell since both the economy is strained and spending is down. RTV6's Stephanie Wade shows you how Hoosier farmers are struggling to rebound from the coronavirus pandemic. Healthcare workers and first responders have become our country's heroes, the face of those fighting this pandemic. But according to Denny Fry, there are a lot of considerations that need to be given to farmers right now too. Farmers across the Hoosier state are feeling the pinch too, as supply continues to go up. But the demand just isn't there. People are out of work, industries closed, so spending has been down. Disappointed in the fact that having to market their product at this point at the price levels, the market levels that they are at, uh, have, causing a lot of concern this year about getting the cash flow to be what it needs to be to pay for their inputs. Fry's worked in the agricultural industry for over 40 years. He runs the Shelby County Co-op, serving over 600 farmers in eight surrounding counties. He says the pandemic is forcing farmers to sit on their crops. They can't move or sell. Right now, they're planting crops, not knowing who the buyers are, or what consumption will be. Very concerned about basically, you know, when, how long is this thing gonna play out? You know, we're in uncharted territory, no precedent to go by. And it isn't just impacting the food industry. Because of the lack of travel, renewable fuels like soybean oil for diesel has gotten plentiful, and the supply of ethanol has gotten at record highs. They've shut their production down. Uh, so it has a major effect on our travel industry also. Fry tells me they're waiting to see if the government will issue any type of subsidy or program to help farmers get through this. As it stands, he says there's only financial protection if you weren't able to plant your crops. But as we know, that's not the issue right now. But if those things don't fall into place, it's going to be hard to bridge through for, for a number of people. Working for you, Stephanie Wade, RTV6. And tonight, the Senate approved another round of coronavirus relief, including $500 billion for businesses. Some companies missed out on getting help from the first round of relief. Alicia Nieves shows you what they're hoping for this time. For the millions of small businesses struggling right now, Congress set aside roughly $350 billion to help them when it passed the CARES Act. If we would not have received this PPP loan, every one of my staff, including myself, would be on employment right now. The Treasury Department says 1.6 million businesses got on average $250,000 in forgivable loans under the Paycheck Protection Program. But a survey done by the National Small Business Association shows 52% of small businesses applied for the loans but did not get them. And part of the reason why is because some of the money intended for smaller businesses went to much larger companies and chains, like the steakhouse chain Ruth's Chris or the fast food restaurant chain Shake Shack. It's extremely frustrating that huge corporations are receiving $10 million loans and smaller businesses didn't get any payout at all. Shake Shack has announced it is returning the $10 million it got, but on a technicality, that money can't be redistributed to smaller businesses still in need. A lot of banks, especially the bigger banks, uh, you know, serve their existing uh, loan customers first. Todd McCracken is with the NSBA. A company that has an existing lending relationship, a borrowing relationship from the business perspective with a bank uh, is probably a well-established business, probably a little bit larger business on average. When Congress passed the Paycheck Protection Program under the CARES Act, it allowed banks to distribute the money in an effort to get that money out faster than the government could. But banks are now being criticized, some even sued, for possible preferential lending. It was to be expected that a lot of this kind of thing was happening. I think it's different scenarios at different institutions. In an effort to remedy this, Congress is trying to pass another bill that would give small businesses additional money. But those businesses are hoping this time that money comes with more and timely guidance. I do think that finding a way to uh, target the companies that were left out in this round um, uh, would probably be helpful. Without additional help, the NSBA survey shows nearly half of all small businesses are not confident about their financial future. And small businesses make up nearly half of the U.S. economy. I'm Alicia Nieves reporting. 
And during today's White House briefing, President Trump urged large public companies and even Harvard University to follow the example of Shake Shack and return paycheck protection loans that were intended for small businesses. The COVID-19 outbreak has been especially tough on one of the most important parts of the downtown Indy economy. We're taking a closer look at how the tourism and hospitality industries are starting their plans to rebound. But first, members of a Christian biker church are trading their leather jackets for aprons. How the group is stepping up to feed thousands of neighbors in need. A group of Christian bikers in Connorsville is swapping out their Harleys for a large orange trailer as they continue to work to help the less fortunate during the pandemic. RTV6 photojournalist Jake Weller shows how Cross Point Biker Church is feeding thousands of neighbors in need. I've been pastoring for a little over 10 years and I've never pastored through an epi epidemic. The coronavirus, uh, it kind of got the best of a lot of people. I was working for Wayzata Home Products. Once this hit, they, they shut down for good. It closed a lot of factories down. and I just happened to be working in one of them. Since the virus, uh, it's like impossible to try to find something that I can, I can do. It's been a struggle. Most places won't even open their doors to people who are looking for jobs. And we are a church of love, and we, you know, that's that's one thing we miss. Ever since we started, I've always told them we're a service church. We have 150 to 200 meals that go out in the mornings that we put together. We run with the trailer, and then we just set and assemble meal after meal. I mean, we've been down to Texas, Louisiana, Florida to feed hurricane victims, and uh, we just started feeding here. The reason that we do so well is because of God. I'm able to work. The Lord told me to do this, and it's just the way it is. I've taken the last three weeks off of my own job. Me, I love doing it. It makes me feel good, and plus I know our community really needs it. Come back, and I'll have these other three in the series. I think they're doing something that's amazing. In my opinion, they are doing exactly what the Bible says to do. As far as the biker faith, you will never find any other people that goes be above and beyond what bikers do. It says in the Bible that he's going to come in on a white horse. I think that horse will be a Harley. <laughs> Today's breakfast food. There's usually a line of people. 30,000 people. We have done 30,000 people in four weeks. Everybody just works together. Everybody gets along. Well, I think that's what God wanted us to do. He wants us to love each other and help each other in any way we can. Faith is in the fruits. And you can see the fruits of their labor. You can see the, 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 the food that they're passing out. You can see the, the love that's been prepared. We attribute everything that we do is uh, because God has blessed us and uh, gives us a heart for people. It makes me feel good to help people, you know what I mean? We've done it so long it just kind of works. We have got it down to an art form uh, on how to feed people in bulk, like the loaves and fishes. The group says it served 1,600 meals yesterday. They served meals Monday through Friday around the community. Great story to see there, Kevin. Temperatures, they'll be falling quickly with the clear skies and the wind calming down. Lower 40s by midnight. We'll talk about how cold in the morning and then the big change tomorrow afternoon. Just search RTV6. This is RTV6 News at 7, working for you. The loss of several big events due to COVID-19 concerns has had a major impact on the tourism industry here in Indianapolis. But experts say Indiana is actually one of the luckier states when it comes to tourism impact due to COVID-19. RTV6's Alyssa Donovan explains. Like most states, Indiana's tourism industry has taken a major hit due to the COVID-19 pandemic, rescheduling of the Indy 500 and cancellation of sports events. But experts say Indiana is actually one of the lucky states when it comes to the impact on tourism. So right now, Indiana is not as affected by the tourism and travel industry, you know, simply due to numbers. While visitor spending in 2019 accounted for $9.3 billion in total economic impact, Indiana has several other industries still picking up the slack. So at least, you know, this one industry 
has the Midwest a little bit safeguarded. And since we do still need things like the agriculture industry, manufacturing industry, that's actually better news for the Midwest. Other states like Florida, Nevada, and Hawaii, whose economy depend heavily on tourism, are going to have a bigger challenge to return to normalcy. Losing this chunk of time alone is detrimental to their economy. While not as devastating, Indiana has seen major losses too. The Big Ten tournament was expected to bring in $15 million to the city of Indianapolis. The NCAA tournament close to $40 million. And rescheduling the Indy 500 could mean far less turnout than the typical 300,000 fans who flocked to the city in past years. There are more than 150,000 people who work in tourism here in Indiana. All of those people are being greatly impacted by these closures and cancellations. However, there is a silver lining. Indiana has a better chance of a quicker recovery than some other states because we have other support from different industries. I'm Alyssa Donovan, RTV6. And thank you, Alyssa, from today's sunshine. We'll see a little more tomorrow to Thursday showers. I should say rain because I think there'll be periods of a steady rain and Saturday rain most likely. Those two days stick out as we go through the next five days. And I think probably up to two inches of rain in the southern half of the state before we're all said and done by uh, Saturday night. As far as our temperature trend, we're up tomorrow. Warmest day in the seven-day forecast. We back off because of the rain Thursday. Friday, a dry day, just a slight chance of showers. Temperatures come back up a bit and then a cooler week. Weekend, temperatures will be below average. And looking beyond the seven day forecast, indications are into early May will continue a trend favoring below average temperatures. We're in the 50s now. It's been comfortable in the sense that temperature's not too cold, but the wind makes it feel colder. Look at Gary, Fort Wayne to Dayton, where there's been a stream of clouds off of Lake Michigan. Temperatures are cooler there. 57 in Bloomington, Indianapolis, two degrees cooler than that. Strongest wind gust I saw in our viewing area up in Delaware County, Muncie with a 42 mile per hour gust this afternoon. The wind will calm down tonight and temperatures, watch how quickly they fall all the way into, in some cases, the lower 30s in eastern Indiana. Cold enough for frost. The wind will relax, allowing that coldest air to settle to the ground. The official temperature is taken at about five feet above ground level and the cold, dense air settles below that. There are the wind's direction tomorrow out of the south and southwest. It will increase. We'll see gusts to 20 miles per hour, and it's a warmer wind. A 30-degree jump from morning low to afternoon high tomorrow. Temperature all the way back up to 66. That's a nice recovery. May have the heat on in your car in the morning and open the windows in the afternoon. Temperatures through the day have more sunshine to work with in the morning. That gets us to 53 by 11 a.m. Afternoon highs with increasing clouds in the upper 60s. Temperatures as we go Wednesday night into Thursday warmer because of cloud cover and the arrival of rain. There's your rain, especially in the southern half of the state through the day on Thursday. Rainfall potential is heaviest in the southern half of the state, including what we expect on Saturday. That's why I think some spots may see two inches of rain between now and, say, Saturday night. Temperatures will be cool for the weekend in the 50s. Our rain chances will diminish for the second half of the weekend. That's your seven-day forecast. We'll be back with more Six News right after this. Sticking together while staying apart. Weeks into the coronavirus pandemic, you're probably used to washing your hands as soon as you get home. But what about those objects that we all carry around? Experts are weighing in on whether you need to wash and sanitize items like your phone, your glasses, or your keys. They say it's highly unlikely that coronavirus will be transmitted through objects like these, but your hands are by far the biggest concern. The next dirtiest item you might carry with you could be money. But again, you just want to make sure you wash your hands after handling any bills to stay safe. And some good things.
things happening because of the pandemic. Sea turtles are thriving right now on empty beaches. Cities are seeing more turtle nests than ever before, when typically they have to rope off areas from the public. In Thailand, researchers found 11 nests on one beach. They say that's the most the country has seen in 20 years. Researchers are hopeful that when beaches open back up, people will respect the additional nesting. Kevin. You know how one turtle talks to another turtle? <laughs> Shell phone. You're so funny, Kevin. Sunshine and 68 tomorrow. I love that joke. I think, I think I've heard it from you before. It's always a good one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for making RTV6 your choice for news. Our next newscast is tonight at 11. We'll be calling you on that shell phone, Kevin.